here. Uh, I'm, you know, I go to different countries. Um, I help people to have a good relationship with God. That you can enjoy God's love. Then your life will be full of joy and peace. And then when you think of God, you like Him. Then when we, you'll be motivated to serve God. Now, my first session here, I will talk about the distinction of the grace and the law of God. How to, how to live in the love and the grace of God. And enjoy God. And be motivated by God. And then be motivated to serve God. Now I first want to describe how it is when we grow up. When most people grow up, adults will say to them, adults, you know, adults will say to them, adults, that if you're good, I like you. If you are not good, nobody likes you. And then if you are not good, I'm going to spank you. And many children grow up and then they say, nobody likes me. I'm not good enough. And also they will look at themselves like this. They will say, I'm not a, you know, I'm... People don't like me. I have to do better. But I'm not good enough. So people don't like me. And I don't like myself. Now when we believe in Jesus, we should live in the grace of God that we are saved by grace through faith. But very often, even in the church, people hear the message like this. If you are good, if you pray a lot, you love God, and then we like you. And then God likes you. You'll be blessed by God. But, but then many people say, I don't pray enough. I don't love God enough. And I feel God is far away. And people will tell them, you don't love God enough. Therefore, God doesn't bless you. So people have this pressure. I have to do better. But I'm not doing well enough. That way people have guilt feeling. And they have pressure. They also think that to reach God is too far away. It's too hard to love God all the time. Help him loudly. Let him hear what you said. Now, when we grow up, we grow up to be like this. 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 
It is uh, too hard to love no, God. No, 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 you don't say English. You say in your language to the people. Uh, that, that's the language you speak. What, what do you say? Uh, they don't understand the language. Okay. So people might say, I don't have the motivation to pray a lot. It's too hard for me to overcome my sins. I'm too weak. I cannot serve God with power. Now people think like this because they are living under the law. You have to be good enough and then you can please God and then you can be a better Christian and people say, yes, I want you but I'm not good enough. Now today my message is whatever we do for God God is very happy and God cares about us all the time his love for us is great. He accepts us. He accepts us even when we are weak. And then if we're not doing well enough, we just repent. And the whole heaven will rejoice because we repent. And then even when we give a cup of cold water to a little one, even when we give a cup of cold water to a little one, you give a cup of cold water, water to a little, a little one. one. Jesus is very happy and he said you will not lose your reward. So Jesus is saying, when you repent, I'm very happy. When you do a little thing for me, I'm very happy. So that way we'll say, yes, it's not hard to please God. That because God accepts us all the time, and then we will feel more relaxed to come to God. But let me tell you, when I live in the grace of God, it doesn't mean I'm lazy. Because I know God is so full of love. And full of blessings, I don't want to lose any blessings from God. I know that all sins are destructive. Therefore, I do not let any sin come into my life. I obey God totally as much as I can. But at the same time I'm relaxing the Lord, I would say when I repent, God is very happy. When I'm not doing well enough, I ask God for help, God is very happy. When I do any little thing for God, God is very happy. When I give my life more for God, God is very happy. Now, do you, do you see the difference? When people live under the law, they always say, I'm not good enough. I cannot do great things for God. It's too hard for me. I cannot 
I can never reach the expectation of God. And I cannot reach the expectation of the people. So people feel pressure. I have heard Christians and even pastors say this. They will say, I like Jesus to come back soon. Then I don't have to work. Because work is hard. But I hope you will say, when I'm not doing well enough, I ask God to forgive me, and He is happy to forgive me. And then when I do anything, you know, when I love God, God is very happy. God is smiling at me. When I obey God and serve God, God is very, very happy. Wow. Now, let me tell you, when I wake up every morning, every day I will say, God is loving me. I can enjoy life. And whatever I do today for God, God is very happy. So I can Amen. rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah! <laughs> now that way you are more relaxed. Okay, now I'm going to say, you know, some Bible verses and explain it. Um, I will explain some Bible verses. Okay, so, to, so that we understand how much God loves us. Isaiah chapter 40, uh, 49, 15, verses 15 to 16. Um, and every time you say the verse, you can say it twice so that they can find it. Okay, there it says that can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born, though she may forget, I will not forget you. Uh, what about just what? the first part. Just, just verse 15. Omusate asovara okwela vila omana we guayon sa no kubera nechi sa omana kuya zade no omusate asovara okwela vila na ye ye katonda tasovara okwela vila Now if someone can help him in the future when I look for a Bible verse, you need to turn to it and then give it to him. So uh, let him read from the Bible. Um, okay. okay, now it's okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Just verse 15. Verse 15. Mm. Okay. Okay. We wawo abo ba yizo kwera bila na yesu kwera bile kwe. Fifteen. Fifteen only. Okay. So what it says that, can a mother forget her baby at her breast? How many of you here are mothers? Okay. Did you ever forget your baby somewhere? No. <laughs> so you remember your baby all the time, right? And you think of your baby all the time. Don't go far away. Now, what the Bible says is that even if she forgets the baby, I will not forget you. Amen. That God thinks about us all the time. Now from the Bible, when God thinks about us, how does he think about us? Now when some people think of God, they think about God like that. 
They will say, well, God sees my sins. And God is not happy with me. Because, because I'm not good enough. Now some people think of God like that. As I said earlier, when one sinner repents, the whole heaven rejoices. So we don't need to think of God like that. If we're not good enough, we repent of our sin. And God is very happy. And then when we do anything for God, or when we love God, God is very happy. So when God thinks about his people, he likes us. He always thinks of how to bless us. Now those Bible verses, it says that God see the sins of the people and don't like them. Now these verses are for people who don't repent. For people who repent, God will never say, I don't hear the prayers. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, you have to say it loudly because he was speaking to you. Uh, Speak loudly to the whole group. What he said. So if you have a heart to love God, even if you don't love God enough, when God thinks of you, He likes you. He's happy with you. So every time you think of God, you say, God is loving me now. God is happy with me now. When I love God, God is very happy. Now, let me tell you the difference between people and God. Now, when, sometime when we do something well, and then when people look at us, they might say, yes, you did something well, but something else you're not good enough. So people have a tendency to look at our shortcomings, our weaknesses. But when God looks at us, even if we have weaknesses and shortcomings, when we say we're sorry for our sins, when we say we love God, God is very, very happy. So God looks at your good things. Even a cup of cold water to give to a little one. Now let me ask you, can you give a cup of cold water to a little one? Is it difficult? So it's it not difficult. Yeah, it is not, not difficult. difficult. Yeah, so even if you do a little thing for God, God is very happy. And God will not say, well, you didn't do other things well enough. God will just look at your heart toward God. If you, if you have a heart to love God and to bless people, God is very happy with you. Let me ask you, do you have a heart to love God? Do you love God? If you love God, do you raise your hand? Are you sorry for your sins? Are you sorry for your sins? Raise your hand. 
you want to do something to please God? If you do, raise your hand. So, so if you have this heart, you can say all day long. You can say all day long. God is very happy with me. God is blessing me. God, you know, when God sees me, he's very happy. So, every day you can be happy. And we don't have to think of, oh, I have that sin. When we, when we have the sin, we ask God to forgive us. And, and we ask God to help us to overcome the sin. And God is very happy with us. Okay, now another verse, Zephaniah 3.17. Now please turn to the verse quickly for him. Okay. There it says in the second part, the second part. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Okay. Okay. Now, Zephaniah is minor prophet. Okay. okay, now, so what it says, what it says here is that, the second part of it. Zephaniah. Zephaniah is before that. Okay, now what it says here is that, did you find it? Did someone find it? The second part, can you read it loudly? Did she find it? Did you find it? Read it loudly. What you say? Mukama katonda o aliwa katibu. Awam 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 awamani analokola. Alipsanyu kila ne sanyu. Alium alium mulira mukwagala mukwagala ape. Alipsanyu kila nga nga imba. It's the same verse, verse. Okay. Now, yeah. what it says here is that God is happy with us. And He will quiet you with His love. That means He will look at you with love. Put His love onto you. To give you peace. So that you quiet down, so that you quiet down, you be peaceful and you be relaxed. And then he will rejoice over you with singing. He'll be so happy with you that he will sing over you. Not. Not only will the Christians sing to God, God will sing to us too. God might sing to you like this. I'm happy with you. I like you. So he will sing over you. Yeah. And he will rejoice over you with singing. He will be smiling over you. When you have this heart to say, Lord, I love you. 
So when people have this heart, God is willing to help you. God is willing to bless you. Okay. Now, in other words, Psalm 139, verse 5. Psalm 139, verse 5. So what it says here, you have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Um, can you find it? Anyone uh, find it? Musomera Bible Yoruganda. Zaburi. Chikumi asatu mumuenda. Orunyiridu wakuta anoluka. Yogendo kusoma. Muzaburi. Are you here to sell? Okay, you just paraphrase it. The Lord is in front of me and behind me and he lays his hand upon me. Just paraphrase. it. So what it says here is, okay, you read it. Uh, to mm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what it says is that, God is in front of you and behind you yes. and he's laying his head upon you to bless you. So he's willing to spend time with you. That he'll come to you and bless you. Amen. Let me ask you. Is there someone who is willing to stay with you all day long? And help you and do things, good things for you? Now, even if the people wants to do it, they won't have the time to do it, right? And many people don't want to do it to stay with you all day long. But God is willing, he is happy to be with us all day long and bless us. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you, it's a sad thing that many Africans have been taken to America and other countries to be slaves in the past. And then when they were slaves, when the master says, come, and then the slave has to come. Now, if I put it in a different, uh, you know, in a, a very a daily life way, now if the slave is in the washroom, and, and the master says, come. He, he cannot say, wait. <laughs> he has to finish as fast as he can. <laughs> and then he has to run to the master. <laughs> and then he said, what can I do for you? Because if he doesn't come, his master will whip him. So he'll come very quickly. Let me ask you, is God our slave? No. But he serves us better than a slave. He serves, he serves us day and night. And he also serves us with a happy heart. When a slave serves us, the slave would be unhappy. Uh, 
But God serves us with a happy heart more than But you might say, is God really serving me? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, even when we sin, do you feel the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Sin no more. Do you feel the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Sin no more. So even when we sin, He doesn't forsake us. He will continue to bless our life and draw us back to Him. Mm -hmm. And then when you worship him, do you feel joy? Hallelujah. 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 Do you feel joy? Hallelujah. That means God is blessing you. So what I'm saying is when we sin, he still comes to be with us and bless us. And then when we pray to him or praise him, he will for sure come to bless us. So he is with us all the time. Amen. Even when we are in heaven, never Does God say, "Well, now you're in heaven, I can take a nap and sleep"? In heaven, you experience peace and joy and love all the time. Because God is ministering to us forever in heaven. So I hope you say to God all the time. You are ministering to us all the time. I don't deserve it. Why do you love me so much? Now when I pray to God, after I experience the Holy Spirit, every time I think of God, <laughs> His joy will come through me. Hallelujah. His joy will come through me. His joy will come through me. And I can feel power all over my body. Now many times I say, is it just my thinking? So I, so I don't think of the joy just think of Jesus and the joy comes again so I know that God is full of joy and whenever we come to him we we'll experience peace and when you have a close relationship with him, you experience joy. We also experience power going through your body. Amen. And you experience love. That means God is ministering to you all the time. Isn't that wonderful? So we can say all the time, God is with me all the time. God made me an important person. God is blessing me all the time. So I can, I can enjoy life. I can enjoy God. I can be happy all the time. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus at the noon time. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the biblical teaching is that 
God blesses us all the time. Ah, in Jesus' name, we move. Ye ne gamani katonda tu mukisabri kasera kona. God is with us all the time. Katonda bera ne febri kasera kona. And whenever we repent, He's very happy. Ah, but when ne nya katonda sigara ngamusanifu. And whenever we love him, he is very happy. And his love will never go away. That way, then we have strength all the time. Many Christians say to me, I feel God is far away. Because they say, well, I have this trouble. And I pray to God, this trouble doesn't go away. Now we ask you, do you have troubles? Now, many people think because we have trouble, therefore God is not loving me. But let me tell you this. When Adam and Eve sinned, and God said to him, even when you plow on the field, you will have thorns and thistles that grow in the field. Now, for those who understand my English can help him, or, or someone else who understand, you know, can speak English better, can help him too, you know, or, or in, interpret. Fawns and thistles, you know, fawns come out. Yeah. Instead of fruits, sometimes you have fruits, sometimes you have fawns. Yeah. What did you say? Say it loudly for him. So, what, 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 what? Do you understand me? What, what are you saying? She's putting pawns in Luganda. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Can you interpret for them? Yes. Say it, say it, say it. What is God said to Adam? When you work on the field, Instead of getting fruits all the time, you will get thorns and thistles from time to time. Katonda ya gamba Adam neka wa bema marukono na di be muri wa muri me nimero te muda kufuna mu biwara bioka na magua gaja kubera mu ne biwara biya kubera mu. Because after Adam's sin, we all suffer. Kubango rufani manga Adam mazokono na wabera o inaku no ne bizu. The fact that we suffer doesn't mean God doesn't love us. But in the midst of the suffering, we can have strength from the Lord. We can have joy from the Lord. And we can enjoy God to help us to have strength in the Lord. And I want to tell you this. We don't need to, you know, bang on ourselves and say, God doesn't like me. God is unhappy with me because of my sins. We can always say, when I repent, God forgives me. When I, got, when I love God, God is very happy. And God is drawing me to Him all the time. And God is loving us with everlasting love. So I'm precious. And I can enjoy life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Isaiah ch chapter 54, verse 10. Uh, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Uh, 
Isaya atano munya Orunyi nilogwe kumi ayatu seko atu somere Can you read it? Uh, Isaya atano munya Orunyi nilogwe kumi Kumanga hey. ensozi zilivao mm. No sozi mwidiwao mm. Na ye chisati yangi Kuchilivao mm. So neenda gano yangi Eye mirende Amen. Okay. Let me ask you. Is it easy to move a mountain? Is it easy to build a house like this? To move the bricks? Is it easy to move the bricks here? No, it's difficult, right? You need to have trucks to move these bricks. And to move a mountain is much harder. But God says, but God says, even if you can move the mountains, you cannot move away my love for you. And my covenant of peace will not be removed. My covenant for you will stay forever. And then says the Lord who has compassion on you. So God is compassion all the time. God always wants to bless us. Now, let me tell you, from the Bible, we can see how God has compassion on people who has sinned. Now, when Peter was about to deny Jesus three times, Peter, now, Jesus did not say, how can you deny me? Yes, Jesus did not say, did not say to Peter, why did, why will you deny me? Yes, Peter, Peter, Instead, Jesus said this. Yes, I have prayed for you that you will not lose your faith. And then when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. Mm -hmm. Even when Peter was about to deny Jesus three times, Jesus gave him hope. And Jesus told him that. When Jesus knew that he was going to deny Jesus three times, Jesus already prayed for him so that he would not lose his faith. So Jesus prayed for him so that he would continue our faith. And then also Jesus you know, said to him, when you return, when you turn back, Strengthen your brothers. So Jesus trusts in Peter. So when you turn back, you can bless other people. What we can see here is, when Jesus knows our weaknesses, he prays for us to strengthen us and then he wants to raise us up to a higher level. So we can always have this confidence in God. God loves me all the time. God wants to bless me all the time. Whenever I repent, God is very happy. Whenever I love God, God is very happy. Whenever I obey him, he's very happy. So you can be happy Christians. You can be happy Christians. Many Christians are not very happy. Uh, they say I have difficulties in life I don't feel joy I don't feel 
I don't have much strength. And I don't pray enough. And I have sins. Now when you look at your weaknesses, when you look at your sins and weaknesses, you will say, I'm not good enough. What I want to tell you today, don't just look at your sins and weaknesses. Look at God. Amen. God can forgive our sins. God wants to bless us. Whenever we love him, God is very, very happy. So all the time, don't look at your weaknesses. When you have weaknesses, you say, Lord, forgive me. Give me strength. And then look at God and think about God and say God wants to bless me all the time. So when you pray every day, first you have the prayer of grace. Prayer of grace means to declare what God, how God loves me and how God blesses me. And then we can have the prayer of worship. Okay, now, let me explain this. Prayer of grace and prayer of worship. Prayer of grace is like this. Now, I hope you, now you all can stand up now and say this with me. Prayer of grace. Okay. God is blessing me. It's, tell them to say it with you. God wants to bless me. God sees that I'm important. God sees that I'm important. God wants to do great things in my life. I can rejoice in the Lord because God loves me all the time. God is with me all the time. I can rejoice in the Lord. I can enjoy God. God is good to me. God loves me all the time. Now this is prayer of grace. And then our prayer of worship. Our prayer of worship. We can say this. I love you, Lord. I hunger for you. I hold on to you. I need you. I want you. I hold on to you. Now you notice when I pray, I use words that are very personal. I, I use words of prayer very personal. I will say, God, I, I hold on to you. I, I need you. Take, take pictures. Take pictures. I need you. I want you. I'm happy with you. I like you. I want you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Jesus. Yes. I love you all oh, the time. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I need you. I love you. I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me ask you again the difference between you can sit down now. The prayer of grace and prayer of worship. Prayer, prayer of grace is declaring his love and grace for us. Like, it's from God to us. God loves us. God cares for me. God stays with me. God cares about me. And prayer of worship is from me to God. I love God. I worship you. I love you. I love God. I love God. I worship you. I need you. I hold on to you. I like you. Now let me ask you now. Tell me whether it's grace or worship. Okay, so tell me, what is the word for grace and for worship? The two words. No, 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 you tell me. Grace, what is grace? Grace in our language. Yeah. No, 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 just the word. Just the word. What is the word in Uganda? Grace. Grace. Echisa. Echisa. And then what is, and then what is, uh, um, uh, worship. Osinza. Osinza. Okay. Now, so when I say a, a prayer, if it's grace, then you say Echisa. And then if it's worship with to us, then you say Okusinza. Okay. Now, okay. God loves me. God loves me. What is it? Say. Katonda anjagara. God loves me. God loves me. Katonda anjagara. Yeah. So it's grace. Yeah, grace. Echisa. It's from God to us. Remember. I love God. Anjagara katonda. Okay. Very good. Okay. God is with me all the time. Very good. Very good. God remembers me all the time. Very good. I like God. Okay, now you know the difference, right? Now, why is it important to declare the grace of God? Because sometimes when we wake up, you say, I have a lot of work to do. I have burdens. I'm, I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy. And then we can say, God cares about me. God is happy with me. God wants to bless me. God is right here blessing me. If you let this belief stay in your heart, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. In, in Romans, in Romans 8, Romans 8, what can separate us from the love of God? And nothing. Now you don't have to turn to it, just write it down. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So you can say every day. It's like this. Look at me. Look at me. If I represent the love of God, if I represent the love of God, 
if I, I, me, represent the love of God, the love of, the love of God is with us all the time. So every day we can say, nothing can separate me from the love of God. I'm loved by God. I can be happy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> now, when we live in the grace of God, we can become very peaceful and joyful. God will take care of everything for me. I just trust in God and obey God. And God will continue to bless me. So I can be happy all the time. Now, when we also, we can use words of grace to speak to the people. Now, now listen to this. When we speak to people, some people speak to people like this. They might speak to the child. You are no good. You are not doing well. You have to do this. Clear the garbage. You have to repent. Believe in Jesus. Now all these are words of the law. Now, it's not wrong to say those things. But we should say those with the grace of God. We can encourage people like this. When I encourage people to pray, I do not say you have to pray how much, how much. But I will say like this. I will say, God has a lot of blessings for you. When you pray to God, God is very happy. God will pour blessings into your life. So you can pray with confidence. God will for sure hear your prayer. <laughs> so instead of just telling people, you have to pray so much, I will tell people, God wants to bless you. There's a lot of blessings waiting for you. When you pray to God, God is very happy. God will smile at you and will bless you. When I encourage people to read the Bible, I will, I will tell them this. The Bible has many promises. When you read the Bible, you will understand the promises of God. And then you'll be strengthened by the word of God. So when you read the Bible, you'll have strength. You'll have strength. You understand God. And you can enjoy God. Now do you understand? To encourage people, not just tell them what to do. But tell them the grace of God for them. Now, for instance, if you teach your children, don't just say, you have to obey, you have to obey. That is the law. But you can tell them. I love you, child. I care about you. And when you obey, we have a happy family. 
Your whole life will be blessed. So we will first tell them the grace of God. And our love for them. So I want to tell you, God has many blessings waiting for you. So we can come to God with confidence. And we can relax in God. And enjoy God. And from our mouth, from our mouth, we always say words of grace. So when we preach, when we preach, preachers, when we preach, don't just tell people you have to pray, you have to repent, you have to obey. But we can, but we can tell people, God has many blessings waiting for you. When we repent, when we hate our sin, and want to leave our sins, God is happy to bless you. The, the whole heaven will rejoice because of you. And when you love God, God is very happy with you. When you bless other people, God is very happy and say you are a good servant. So we can encourage people like that. And then people will be happier Christians. Now let me ask you, do you have any questions about this? Now I want to say one more small point. When I live in the grace of God, it doesn't mean I don't obey God. Actually, because I know God has so many blessings. And I know that sins will destroy my relationship with God. I know that sins will destroy my relationship with God. So I hate sin. Any moment I have sinful thoughts, immediately I will take care of it. And I try to obey God in every area of my life. I don't let any weakness stay in my life. Let me tell you, I'm 66 years old already. But I'm, God is blessing me, I'm so strong. <laughs> And I don't need eyeglasses to read. And I still want to go to different countries every month. I want to give, give as much as I can. Not, not because I have a burden. Not because I have a burden. But because I'm happy with God, I like God, I want to obey God, I want to serve God, I enjoy God, and I like to pray, I like to praise, I enjoy the presence of God. I enjoy the presence of God. I enjoy the grace of God. And I want to obey God in every way. Okay, now does anyone have any question? Any questions about this distinction of grace and the law? Uh, yeah. The law is what we need to obey. Um, <laughs> Grace is his love and what he how he blesses us. Okay. Now any questions? Now, if, if maybe you're not, you know, used to this, but 
When you see me, you can ask me questions if you don't know how to apply this in your life or your ministry. And I want to say this, you know, now the message is finished, but I want to have a time of prayer. Um, oh, you have a question? Uh -huh. My question says, uh, as uh, we are here, the Christians, what? Uh, to do well, we are trying to do well for the people, but uh, eventually they hate us. They hate us? They hate us, yeah. They hate us. How, how, how comes that we, when we're trying to do better, to do good for the people, and they uh, end up hating us? Okay, now. Um, now, you're talking about you're trying to bring Jesus to people, bring the gospel to people, and they uh, hate you, right? Are you talking about that? Are you talking about that? Uh, okay. uh, he's saying that, uh, let me say, now as I can come to you and ask you to help me, maybe with money or anything. You and mean then, to ask questions so, or ask? Let me explain. Yes. So, you see, here in the world, we have challenges. Okay. Once I get a challenge and I need help, then afterwards I come to you. But please, I have got some challenge. Come to whom? Come to, to, to you, to a Christian. To a Christian. To a Christian. Yes. Okay. Yes. But then uh, you you request a Christian that please help me. I have got a challenge. Then a Christian helps uh, that neighbor. After after living out from from the challenge. That one whom, is, whom they helped, he started to, to hurt what, what each other. The, the, they try to help, the people they try to help. Yes. Are those Christians? Yes, all the Christians. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay, thank you. I'll answer the question. Now, now this is not related to our topic today. <laughs> Basically, it's saying when you do something good, you might not get good results. People might dislike us even when we do good things to them. What I want to say is because people have sins. Non-Christians and Christians have sins. So we don't always get good results from people. But one thing we, but one thing we should remember. God is happy when we do good things for Him. For him. Because people have different reasons to dislike other people. Even in churches, sometimes there is hatred. But it doesn't mean that what we do is wrong. Unless we do it that we really do something wrong. When people dislike the good things we do, that is their problem. I don't have to be hurt by that. And I can encourage by saying, God is happy with the good things I've done. God is blessing me. It doesn't matter if someone hates me. God's blessing will continue coming. Okay. Now, 
I want you to have a time to pray for you. And I want to say that because God loves us. When we open our heart to love God, God is happy to bless you. In order to experience the Holy Spirit, you don't have to think of, oh, Holy Spirit is so hard to. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't have to so think like that. Then you can say, when I love God, God is very happy to bless me. When I just say, Lord, I know that you love me. I need you. I want you. And when we worship in our spirit, and really like God, God is happy to bless us. Now I want to demonstrate if two persons are willing to come up, I'll pray for you to demonstrate how to open the heart and how you can experience God too. Uh, <coughs> So any two persons can come forward. Thank you. Just face me. Face me. Relax. Okay. okay. Just relax. Close your eyes. Reach out our heart to God. And believe that God is right here now. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus is with us. Everyone pray now. Everyone stand up. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, come and bless us. We meet you. We worship you. We like you. We want you. It's so wonderful to have you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, we worship you, Jesus, we worship you, Jesus, you can translate, you can translate, we to everyone, to everyone, we worship you, Jesus, we need you, Jesus. You are loving us right now. You want to bless us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I love you. I need you. I want you. You are so wonderful. Oh, yes, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, I love you, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Take away our burdens. Take away our burdens. Take away our words. Oh, Lord Jesus, bless us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, please keep your eyes closed. I'm asking you.
to pay attention, did you experience something in your heart and over your body? Okay, so can you say it, what you experienced just now? Can you say it? Uh, did you experience something just now? In your, in your heart and over your body, okay? Can you, can you say it? Can you say it loudly to the people? Can you say it loudly? Let it interpret. You interpret. I will I will I will I will so I have felt I have felt in my heart a lot of joy. And I have felt in my heart the Lord to be uh, that is near me, is in me. Really, I, I have felt in my heart that the little glory has entered my heart. That's what I have felt. Do you feel peace in your heart? So and Yes, that's and is. then burdens it's like the heart is lighter. Do you feel something like that? The heart is lighter, burdens go away. Uh, yeah. Many people experience that, the burdens go away. How about over the body? Do you feel comfort? Yes. Yes, so this came from the presence of God. Thank you. Uh, uh, how about you? Do you want to share? Uh, yes, you have a way. Yes, God. The pre Sumurwa. I fear uh, deliverance. The presence of God. No, especially when the man of God laid the hand on me. Uh, I was worshipping when you were praying for me. I was feeling the presence of God in my life. Mm -hmm. So, in your heart and over your body, did you feel something? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.